you don't want anything to get past a point of no return. So it's okay to even vocalize, listen, this shit is getting too intense. I'm gonna I'm go ahead and walk off. We can have this conversation when we're both cool. Don't stop. Thank you so much for tuning in for my review to Merit at First Sight. I'm so glad that we're back for this week, okay? Um, but first, I have to shout out, okay, 201 subscribers. Tony DeRosha is my 200th subscriber, so thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate you for joining the fam over here. We are ever growing, and so I appreciate it. Um, and here, that's my little shout out to you. Um, yeah, so I'm still trying to get myself back to normal, y'all. Still trying to get to the swing of things after this surgery, but things are looking up. So anyways, let's get into this review because we got a whole lot to talk about, don't we? <laughs> um, again, still doing this couple by couple because Here's the thing, y'all. It's a two hour show. Catching these scene by scene is very challenging, but I'm going, I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm just having to do it like this because this is what time is permitting of me. So just be patient with me. Thank you for tuning in. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with Jose and Rachel um, because they were a part of the lesser part of the storylines this week. So Jose and Rachel, they get back from the Keys and they're going to their new apartment, which is very nice. I'm sure that's somewhere downtown, y'all. <laughs> Cause that's where all the high rises is and stuff. Anyways, um, they see their new place. It's very, very nice. Rachel tells Jose that she has four alarms and he's just like, I'm pissed off already about these alarms. And it's just like, brother, <laughs> Uh, this, I'm not gonna lie, this episode of Jose, really, I was like, okay, now that we're at the honeymoon phase, I guess I'm back to that. I don't really like Jose because this episode, Jose showed his ass, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she has four alarms. Um, sis, just, just hit the snooze and get up. Or you know what, what, um, there's this, this thing that I had learned about, about getting up in the mornings. Put your alarm clock in a different room because you're gonna have to walk to that room and as you're walking to that room, it's gonna help wake you up. So sis, do that instead of the four alarm clocks because come on, help, help, help me out. You know, I can't be on your side if you doing shit like this. <laughs> they get to Jose's house and he has this over elaborate like house tour about all the stuff that he has in his house and it's still very bachelor pad, like nothing, you know, extravagant. I mean, it's it's a nice house, but it's nothing like crazy, but it's just, he's just so detailed about everything and all that. Still is very patient. He, she's very patient. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he, he takes her to a room where he has like his budget on a whiteboard, which I'm actually kind of feeling. I want to give me a whiteboard to do the same, but I just feel like this was another one of those situations of let me flex, let me show you my money, how much I'm spending, how I'm managing money, you know, but the only thing that I liked about this scene was he was just like, um, you know, I'll teach you how to do this, you know, and cause she, she tensed up as soon as she saw the board, like she tensed up and I understand why, because later on in the show, he's just so like, He's obsessive over his finances. And it's one thing to be very responsible, it's one thing to obsess. So, um, and I don't remember if Jose said he came from humble beginnings. I'm not sure. I, I, Y'all, let me know. Let me know down in the comments below. But 
you would think that the way that he is with money, he comes from humble beginnings, but it's like he's afraid to spend money. And that is a, um, that's an unhealthy relationship with money. It's like he's a martyr, you know? He, he hoards money, doesn't spend money, only spends on necessities instead of actually enjoying life. So they go to Rachel's house and they're looking at her, he's looking at her apartment, she's showing him around, but as soon as they walk in, uh, you got like five gallon jugs of empty jugs over here, and you know, you're a hoarder, basically, and it's like, no, we live in Houston where storms happen all too much, where she has to be prepared, and that's what she said. Like, that freeze was crazy this year. Why are you sitting here acting like that didn't happen? she's preparing herself, especially as a single woman. So I was like, okay, Jose, you, you, you getting a bit queenie for me. And you never know, she's probably recycling or, you know, like you, <laughs> you never know. And the fact that, you know, he's like picking her apart. It... Okay, Jose. Okay, so they go through their counseling session and um, they start talking about money, the finances again. And here comes Jose talking about a joint account. Fucking wait, boy. Boy, ain't no 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 wait. Nobody's getting a joint bank account with you. This is just for all intensive purposes of the show, a trial run. Nobody's getting a joint bank account with you. Nobody, nobody's doing that because you just because you're afraid of money doesn't get that doesn't give you the power to dictate how this woman spends her money, especially in this time. It's okay to have a joint bank account for joint bills. It's okay to have a joint bank account where y'all have a common goal or a common savings y'all want to get. You. That's okay, but you're not about to be sitting here taking control of this woman's money because you're afraid to spend money. Get off of her bag, bro. It's looking real sus, okay? I'm sorry to have to go there, but nobody's doing that, okay? We're in 2021. Nobody's doing that, okay? Like you, you trying to find a way to break up a relationship, share that bank account with both checks going there. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Like there's no way I'm just going to offer up my money. Here you go, honey. Take it off. <laughs> Take it. Have it. What do I need with that? Have my money. Like you might as well be a pimp. Like I just, <laughs> I just don't like that, that mentality. Like it's like. It's like he's trying to parent her in that regard. And it's just like, no, no. Anyways, um, Pastor Cal asks if they've consummated the marriage and they have, they have consummated the marriage. Thank God. I was getting a little worried for Rachel. I'm not going to lie. Oh, Rachel is concerned. You know, she wants to press, you know, push the brakes. And I'm glad Pastor Cal said this. He was like, listen, the experts matched y'all. There's no need to hit the brakes at this point. It's okay to have brake pads, but don't hit the brakes. Like we're doing this for a reason. Y'all are matched because y'all are supposed to be, you know, equally young basically. So, you know, like calm down, sis. When he told Jose that he married up and she then in turn was like, oh no, I married up. Sis. You're the prize. Please stop. But that that's like what I said last week. Rachel is broken. Whoever she was with broke her. And that little best friend of hers, I'm sure she she played no no better part because she picks apart at Rachel. It's like Rachel attracts people who dump on her. She's like a dumping ground for abusers. And you know, like and it doesn't even have to be like physical abusers. It's like she's a dumping ground for like emotional abusers, mental abusers. And it's like, sis, you, you got to put yourself in high esteem, high regard. And I know that takes time. That takes effort. That takes work. That takes like a, a whole spiritual, you know, journey. 
to get yourself to a, a point where you're in, you know, you're, you, you feel you love yourself, right? But don't put this man on a pedestal. Because if you put this man on a pedestal, he's already up here, sis. He's going to surpass you and he's going to hold that shit over you like he's the prize. Nah, sis, you're the prize. You have to think about everything that you bring to this relationship. So I just want Rachel to just seek some counseling, get some self-love around her, get some something. Because I don't want him to play her because that's exactly what is happening right now. Like, mmm. Especially with this money shit, this credit shit. Um, Pastor Cal tells him, like, listen, you cannot take the fact that she likes to travel away from her. You can't do that. And I'm so glad that he said that because Pastor Cal seems to be like a great voice of reason. And he's just looking like stunned, basically, because he says that her traveling is extravagant. No, her traveling is not extravagant if she's doing it the right way. There's ways to enjoy life with your money. Do not cut off her what makes her happy because you're afraid. Like, that's not how a relationship goes. It's about give and take. It's about compromise. And you are not bending when it comes to that at all. Because now it's just like, no, nah, we're not going. I already did that. We're not doing that. Sir. So Sir. I have a screenshot for shot for this couple because I was just scrolling on my phone before this episode even aired this week. I was just scrolling on my phone and I got a Google alert and I'm just gonna put it here. This is what I've been saying. And this episode, I'm not even gonna front. This episode, it's just still to me screams loud that Ryan is not into her. So anyways, Brett and Ryan, they, they get to their new apartment again. Very nice. I'm glad that it's all in one place. Child, they trying to get all the footage they can. <laughs> but um, Ryan says that he feels fortunate to marry Brett. And I'm like, I've never heard that before. Still don't believe it. I just feel like... <laughs> I just feel like somebody is talking to him saying, dude, you gotta, you gotta change the turn around something, something, uh, something. Because Ryan just, he, he really just, I feel like he's really not into her. But he's saying that he feels fortunate. They're talking about, you know, what's they gonna have to move in? And Brett is just like, I don't know what I'm gonna have to move in. And he's just like, necessities, please. Sir, please stop. I don't know if it's me because at this juncture in my life, I feel very selfish and I've never been selfish. So the the thought of a relationship right now in my life, sharing my space, like it repulses me. I don't wanna share a space with anybody but my kids. I don't wanna, in this scene or this, this episode is just like, ooh, because you have to compromise your space. So just listening to Ryan and him telling her like only necessities, first of all, sir, what you're not gonna do is tell me what I'm gonna bring, what I can bring, what I can't bring, how much to bring. How... Uh-uh, we in here for two months, so I'm bringing everything that's gonna make me comfortable. So I was just like... <laughs> Ryan, gross. Just because you live like a serial killer with only seven items in your house doesn't mean I do and that's what makes me comfortable. If stuff and things and all this type of, you know, if, if all that makes me comfortable, don't tell me what not to bring. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm all for a compromise, guys. I don't want you to misconstrue what I'm saying. It's just at the place in my life, I think I've done a lot of compromising to where this whole scene was just like, ew, gross. I do what I want when I want to. Like that's how I feel the whole time. So forgive me if y'all didn't see it the same way, but sir, no, go to hell. Like what? <laughs> go to Brett's apartment and Brett has a lot of color in her apartment. Um, You know, very, just look basic to me. I'm not even gonna front. It wasn't anything like to gob at. Like, oh my gosh, she's such a, you know, home decor guru. Like it was, it was nothing like that for me. 
Um, it was just, it was just nice. You know, it was just, it looked like a regular ass apartment that you can get on Airbnb and rent out for a couple days for $67 a day. So anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, but he, Brett, I mean, not Brett, uh, Ryan and Brett's dog, they're meshing. He, uh, she's a cutie. I don't know if it was a he or she, I didn't pay attention to those type of details. So I apologize, but she's cute, super hyper. Love that. They go to Ryan's apartment. Ryan's apartment. She, I screamed when she was like, yeah, there's like seven different shades of brown in his house. That was hilarious. I was like, child, if that ain't, if that doesn't scream bachelor pad, I don't know what to tell you. Like leather couch, browns, earth tone colors, you know, just no pizzazz, just real basic. Uh, <laughs> that's what it screamed to me so yeah she saw that deer on his wall on his on his wall in his bedroom and she was like so how attached are you to this now i'm not gonna front even though like i live in the city but i'm country at heart like i, I live in houston but i'm in texas you know what i'm saying like even if you're in a city like you, you're still country and that's me. I, I, I want a homestead one day. I want a farm. I want... So the way that Brett likes to do things and how adventurous he is, I'm not going to lie. I love that in a man, like, or in a partner. Like, I love that because I want to do outdoorsy stuff and garden and hoe and have, um, you know, farm animals. I want to get into my agriculture. Like, I want to get to my roots. And that's part of my roots. Like, I have family that have been doing this forever. You know, like a lot of my roots stem from Louisiana, like old Louisiana country type stuff. So that that rings true in my heart. I love that. Um, me and my, uh, my ex fiance, we were on that tip. But <laughs> so I, every time Brett was talking about, I'm not outdoorsy, I don't like country, I don't. I'm not gonna lie guys. Yes, Crystal was rolling her eyes. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's my lifestyle that I really love. And it's just like, girl, calm down. Like you really don't understand what the joy is in that type of living. And it's like, I want her to give it a try, but I want Ryan to actually like her. I want Ryan to actually to be into her so that they can have these experiences. But it just seems like he's going through the motion. Y'all, it looks like they've been married for like 15 years and he is checked out emotionally. That's how it looks. So they meet with Pastor Cal and they're having their, you know, like a check-in, you know, like the other couples. And they're talking about how they feel about each other. And Ryan said, it's cool. And I was like, she's cool. What is she, a homeboy? Like, <laughs> y'all, like these, these are just the indicators, y'all. These are the indicators, okay, that Ryan is not feeling Brett, he's not, he's, honey, he's just not that into you. Um, and if, if they make it, I'm going to be very shocked. I'm going to be very shocked if they make it. They haven't had sex yet. Um, Pastor Cal asks, asks if, um, they're happy with their level of intimacy. Both of them are saying yes. Cause it's only been a weekend so you know it, it, it's 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 coming you know that it's not like they're sitting where Mirla and Gil are but we'll get there anyways <laughs> yeah so Brett you know Brett says she has a crush on Ryan and so and Ryan's just like yeah I like her yeah I like her now <laughs> this further perpetuates my point he is not that into her because she's not his type. That is why. And it's unfortunate, really, it's unfortunate because you can tell that Brett has a lively personality, um, that she's really into him. But I hate seeing those situations where the woman is more into the man because men take, they take advantage of these situations. I have been... I, I have fallen victim to this. Y'all, I've fallen victim to this. And I know women have.
So it's really because you look like a pick me. You look like a pick Misha when it's when it's when it's scale that way. Mirla and Gil. This is the first time I've not had a lot of notes for them. So we I, I'm sure we'll get through this fairly quick. But I still want to know what y'all 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 thoughts and opinions are. So y'all comment down below. They 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 have their apartment and um what's his name? Gil Gil carries Mirla over the threshold and she just looks so unimpressed. She's just like the whole time the Mirla face. And she goes, listen, I'm sorry, ladies, all you ladies who like romantic stuff. Um, it's just corny to me. I mean, it's nice, but it's just corny. And I'm like, Mirla, who hurt you? Who hurt you? <laughs> who hurt you, Mirla? Anyways. Gil lays on the bed and he's just like, is this where the magic is going to happen? And she's just like, no. And I'm like, oh my God, this is painful to watch. Oh, Mirla, they go to Mirla's apartment and Gil is in his confessional and he's just like, I better see diamonds and gold and stuff everywhere. And listen, I was very, um, it was underwhelming to see her apartment, very underwhelming. Like, <laughs> like, okay, sis, you like a lot of nice stuff. I, I do too. Um, It didn't scream luxury. Like it didn't, the closet, like, sis, my apartment is more luxury than that. Like. <laughs> Like, you you doing all of this, and I don't, listen, get your bag, sis. But here, like, she just, she talks. Anyway, Marilyn just talked a whole lot for her to not be living, like, for her, for her living quarters to look very underwhelming. That's all I'm saying. It's just looking real, real basic. That's, that's all I'm saying, like. But get your bag though, sis. Like you getting that. Like I, I aspire to that. But I all right, anyways. So <laughs> um Gil is in her, you know, asking about how much her shoes cost. And my I thought that whole scene was super inappropriate because it's like, why? Why are you asking me about past purchases? Don't ask me about my past purchases. They don't affect you. If you can't measure up, brother, I don't know what to tell you, but don't ask me about that. So I was just, you know, and then she was saying she, she spends that kind of money like two to three times a year. That's not crazy. Like that's not unreasonable. I think if, you know, if you make the kind of money or if you save the kind of money to have those little gifts for yourself, what is so unreasonable about that? Unreasonable about that? Here's my issue with Gil in this regard and with a lot of people that I come in contact with. Just because I like nice things, just because I like expensive things, just because I like to do things for myself, it doesn't make me bougie. It doesn't make me less than a person. I don't look my nose down at you. I don't see anybody any less just because I want to do something for myself. So don't try to spend my money with your pockets and try to make me feel bad about it, especially if I'm working hard for my shit. Like, don't try to make me feel bad because of how I spend money. Like, there's no way in all of hell, like, you're gonna make me feel a way because I'm doing something for myself. Like, in that in that situation, I, I'm completely on Mirla's side because Mirla's doing it for herself. You know, she's doing it for herself. So it's like, sir, I don't give a damn what you spend your money on. I'm gonna spend my money on what I spend my money on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't like the judgment factor of it all because my family, unfortunately, 
calls me bougie because I want better for myself because I like nice things because I don't I don't sit here and say well you know everybody ain't able I'm just going to sit here and take what I can get I'm gonna just be old hit quick old nigga like I'm like <laughs> I don't want that. I want what life has to offer me in the best way. So why am I not worthy of these things? You know, so it's just, I just hate when people are like that. And it's like, okay, get you some nice shit. Maybe it'll change your perspective, but don't sit here and tell me how to spend my money with your pockets. Please don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't put myself in your box. Don't put myself in your category. We are not the same. Doesn't mean I'm better than you. We're not the same. That's all I'm saying. So they go to Gil's apartment and of course Gil is greeted by Hype. Hype is a cutie. Um, everybody's dogs on here is really cute. He's being affectionate with the dog and as soon as she walk in, it smells in here. What is that wet on the floor? I'm just trying to figure out if he slobbers. Oh. Uh, I don't want to touch it. I don't, uh, no, I'm just trying to see, like it smells, uh, you know? And I'm just like, girl. Okay, I get the part of not wanting to touch the dog because people can just not, you know, people can be, cannot be dog people. Like, he's just like, you know, this is hype and you know, they're, she, he, they're introducing the dog and He's trying to see how they're gonna bond and Mila is not for the shits. Like she, she is not here for it. She she doesn't want a dog. She's like, I don't want a dog. I don't I don't want to. She's like, but she said in her confessional, but I'm trying to compromise for my husband. And I was just like, oh girl. So Mila and Gil have their uh marital counsel session, their their counseling session with with Pastor uh Cal. And the thing that annoyed me the most, again, w with both of them, is her shopping. Mirla's not using his money. Like, she's not... <laughs> like, y'all haven't even gotten to that phase yet for y'all to be that bothered as to how she shops. How do you know if that's going to slow down? Like, how do you know if she's going to alter the way she shops? Like, what do y'all think she's doing? <laughs> If she said that she's only making these extravagant purchases two to three times out of the year, that means she's probably spreading it out. It's probably, it's not hurting her. It's not hurting her, okay? So well, I don't understand what the problem is. Like just, just be the provider, be the man she wants you to show up to be. Leave this woman and her money alone. Um, you know, Gil expressed that he wants to invest his money into real estate, do it. Do it, invest your money into real estate. Y'all are on a trial basis of eight weeks, sir. I need you to not. Like I understand financial, like financial conversations should definitely happen, but don't try to dictate how I'm spending my money. If you wanna implement some shit or if you wanna start talking about how we gonna, we gonna bust these bills down or whatever, like we'll talk about that. If you wanna talk about, you know, my spending habits, before we even get into a permanent situation, sir, bye. But again, that could just be me. That could just be me. <laughs> and my my disgust of relationships. <laughs> it could just be me. But anyways, um, but the, the question about the intimacy that Mirla was very quiet about. He asked, he was, the pastor Cal was like, well, you know, how's the intimacy in your relationship? Have y'all kissed yet? Cause you know, you, you gave him the cheek at your wedding. And what's his name? Uh, Gil, how do I, why do I keep forgetting his name? Gil was like, well, no, she keeps giving me the cheek. So he's like, so y'all haven't consummated your marriage? And he's like, no, he's still a stranger. So, you know, and he, Gil expressed that he asked her, could he go, could she go the whole eight weeks without kissing him? And she said, yes. He was like, if we get to that point, I'm gonna ask for the divorce. And I was like, as you fucking should, because 
who is trying to be in a relationship where there's no intimate affection? Listen, when I was in relationships, when I, or if, if I ever get to a point where I want to be in a relationship, I am super affectionate. I need hugs and kisses. I'm not clingy. I just like affection. Like I, I, that's one of my, that's one of my love languages. Okay. People can have more than one love language. Okay. Don't at me at your mama, but <laughs> that is one of my love languages. I love love and affection. Like kiss me, touch me, hug me. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to make it clap for you. Okay. So like, that's my whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't I, don't get into a relationship if you're not going to be affectionate with me because then I'm going to feel rejected. I'm going to feel disgusting. I'm going to feel like you don't like what you see. I, like, all those things are going to play in my head if you're not affectionate with me. So, I don't know how Gil is thugging it out this far, but listen, kudos to you because there is no way in hell. Eight weeks and I can't get a kiss on the lips? She, um, she was like, yeah, they're pressuring me to kiss and he was just like a peck on the lips like i don't understand how that's <sighs> johnny and bow johnny johnny we were all rooting for you we were all rooting for you johnny what are you doing <laughs> Johnny is blowing my mind in the worst way. Okay, so Johnny and Bauer in their new house and they're talking over dinner. They, you know, of course they looked at the house. The, house, the, the whole look complex is beautiful. Um, like I said, that's one of those really nice sky rises in downtown. Downtown Houston is, it's gorgeous. It's a Mecca. I love downtown Houston. And that's why I love my friends, you know, my friends live downtown, so I live vicariously through them. They're talking whatever over dinner and talking about the shower thing again. And so now I get what, what Bao is saying. She's probably like, she's gonna take a shower in the mornings, whatever, okay, fine. But Johnny is basically saying he's gonna need some time alone. He's gonna need, you know, this is overwhelming and this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, Johnny, what the fuck? You're in a legally binding marriage, sir. Do you know what that is? Like, I'm thinking the whole this whole time that Bao was going to be the one who ran, who was going to be the one to sabotage the relationship, who was going to be the one that was going to be over the top. But it's Johnny. And I feel like he projected all of that onto her so that we could have that perception of her. I see you, you crafty. But <laughs> I don't like the way he's doing Bao. I don't, I don't like the way that he's doing Bao because creating all that distance, like again, like I said, he's planting the seed of abandonment. He's planting the seed that he's gonna be a runner. You know what I'm saying? He's a runner, he's a track star. Like he, like he's, he's just always running from her. And it's just like, sir, I'm gonna need you to grow up and understand you're in a relationship, okay? You're in a marriage. You have to commit to these times because all your, again, you're planting the seed, but you're showing her that when times get tough, you out. And that's not okay to me. I, I, I hate that. I, oh. Now it's one thing to be in an argument and y'all are, you know, having a heated argument and somebody has to just walk away, cool off. That's one thing, but y'all haven't even really had arguments to where the, to the point where it's gotten like crazy. So the fact that he's just like, you know, all this arguing, we've been diving deeply into this emotionally and it's just been so much and it's draining and I just need some time. I need some time. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna get out of here. And I'm like the first night, bro, the first night y'all are together in y'all's own space and you're leaving her and Bao is so, she's so, so classy because she's like okay Johnny if that's what you need okay and I'm like you <laughs> bow you are a gem so Johnny comes back and I'm like not you coming back like ain't shit happened first of all it's the fact that it's a whole thunderstorm right now yeah so Johnny comes back with food or whatever hey I'm back honey I'm home and I would have been like nigga ah uh. Don't come back over here with all that. Like, <laughs> he would have not been able to get in so easy, but that's that's why I'm single. 
because clearly I'm not emotionally mature like Bao. He said that he was glad that he was matched with somebody as emotionally mature as Bao. And I'm like, yeah, she's more than emotionally mature. She's just mature all over. And you need to grow up. They go to Bao's apartment and or her house. And he likes Bao's house. He says it's inviting and warm and all that good stuff. And it, and it does. It looks very nice, nicely put together. Um, I don't like the way it's made, but I don't have to live there. They go to Johnny's apartment and um, they both have bidets. I thought that was funny. But they both have a lot of things that's similar. And I'm like, okay, Johnny, I need you to work with this because... Brother, all that running you're doing, it needs to stop. Like, <laughs> it need, this needs to stop. Johnny has the same shirt, you know, 50 different times. <sighs> Not my culture. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. That's how people shop. Counseling session. Um, Pastor Cal says that the challenges that they faced has been solely based off of fear and unacceptance. And I feel like a lot of that is sitting on Johnny's shoulders because aside from the whole marriage, like when they were getting married, when she had the whole thing, he didn't have to endure that. Um, he said what he felt after the show, like during the little after, the whatever. If y'all watch the show after Married at First Sight to see the couple's insight or see the, the men and the women's insights, I heard what Johnny had to say after that about her, her being super judgmental, which I agreed, but it wasn't done to him in his face. A lot of the hardship, a lot of the judgment, a lot of the fear comes like really, really off of Johnny. And I don't think that he is saying that. I just, I feel like he thinks that the issues that he's having with her are, is her fault. And um, I feel like Bao is doing a lot of bending and compromising and, you know, I see that and he's not doing the same thing. So it's just like, oh yeah, Pastor, you, you hit it on the, Pastor, you hit it on the head with that one. When Bao was, ta was talking, she said that she felt dismissed when she talked about the snoring thing because, you know, because he, do he, he doesn't understand or he can't empathize he just felt like it was a big deal instead of taking, you know, taking her word for it and being more, you know, compassionate about how she was feeling. And I agree. I, I totally felt that. Like, don't dismiss my feelings because I'm telling you when I'm comfortable, you know, how I'm really feeling. And um, listen, the pastor, Pastor Cal was like, listen, um, Johnny, you know, say how you feel. And he was so stressed out. He was just like, Like he was, he was so taken aback, like he couldn't get it out because he didn't want to sound mean. And it's all about delivery. It's all about your word choices. Like, you know what I'm saying? But he gave Johnny the floor because Bao was like, you know, clearly like, even if it hurts, like I still want to know. And he was just like, well, when you get excited or you get happy or joyous, you're like a, you're like really giddy. You're like a child. And um, he was like, and it's not a turn on. He was like, even when I, when you try to kiss me and you're like this, it's the level of ain't shit. It's the level of ain't shit. But anyways, um, <laughs> and he was like, yeah, it's like, I'm kissing a child. Like, yeah, I'm going to kiss you, but it's not hot. It's not sexy. It's not this, it's not that. And that's why I don't initiate because Bao was saying that she initiated all of the physical touch. And I'm glad that the pastor said this. He was, she, cause she was just looking like a child. Like you could have given me anything else. You could have told me I was too goofy or whatever, but an adolescent? The pa pastor Cal was like, listen, Johnny has every right to feel the way that he feels, but I want you Bao to understand that this has nothing to do with you and everything to do with Johnny's issue. This is not your issue. You continue to be you. Don't overthink this. Don't get into your head. Don't make it your problem because the only person you need to be is you. And I love that moment because he was absolutely right. Bow, this is not your fight. <laughs> 
if he you know what i'm saying like if, if that's the way he's he's seeing you what can you do don't change yourself because then you're changing your identity for somebody who's not even guaranteed to be there for you for what stop compromising yourself so bow expresses to to johnny or to to pastor cal that he said i'm not um happy and giddy and jovial around anybody but my romantic partners i don't do that in front of people you know because ba clearly she's saying when she's with the romantic partner that's her safe space i hate that for her because she should be able to be that any time you know that it calls for but she's saying like that's just not who i am around people and so I'm giving that part of myself to you. I'm revealing that part of myself to you because basically she was making Johnny her safe space. And Johnny basically just turned that shit and was like, bitch, I don't even like that shit. Like that's basically what he did to her. And I hate, I hate when people do that. They will, they will really make you a problem and make you feel like the way that you are, the way that you celebrate, the way that you, you know what I'm saying? The, who you are is a problem. And that, that is what births insecurities in people. Cause I'm telling you, people are not born with them. People breed it in, you know, in other people. They project on other people, even out of jealousy, they'll put those types of insecurities on people. And that is how they, and just insecurity. Anyways, let me get off my box. I just don't like the way he is handling my girl. Like she's really trying and you are just trying to bounce at any moment. And I would have told him, but and she may not feel that way, but I would have told Johnny like, sir, I don't feel secure with you because every time we have a problem, you leave. You leave, which means you're not reliable for the couple we've all been waiting to talk about, child. Michaela and Zach. Ooh, child. Ooh, child. <laughs> Ooh, child. All right, Michaela, listen, I'm not going to front. This is going to pain me. This is going to pain me because you're a beautiful black chocolatey girl with a lot of excitement and you exude all this beautiful goddess energy. But sis, let me tell you something. All that crazy shit that you think is cute, it's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. This shit is not cute. And if this is a real fucking issue that you're having, I want you to seek help. If you need a friend to talk to, we can talk. But I just, I, oh, I just, I just, listen, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I am pro woman. I'm not against men, but I'm pro woman. And especially I'm pro black woman. And I hate to see us in these types of lights because it, then people get to call us crazy. People get to call us crazy and unfit and, and, and a loose cannon and a bitch and this and all of these negative stereotypes that we all fight, you know, collectively, that's, that gives them allowance. And I was just like, Michaela, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? But anyways, we'll start. We'll start from the beginning. So Zach, he, you know, he he gives her a cute little surprise, right? He's just like, yeah, she thinks I'm still positive for COVID, but I'm about to pull up with the roses. Now, listen, sir, let me tell you something. Let me let me put you on something real quick. Let me let me put you on. It was nice that you gave her flowers. I I love that gesture. Um. But fellas <laughs> or ladies, um, when you're when you want to give somebody a really thoughtful gift for the low low, um, as far as flowers are concerned, go to Kroger. Okay, if you have a Kroger by you, go to Kroger. Go to the floral department of Kroger. Pay for the flowers. You know that plastic cellophane, all that shit that they put on. Listen, ask them to wrap them. And when you get, and they'll ask you what color you want, they'll, they'll even do a color scheme to match the flowers. And have them wrap the damn flowers so they're not getting poked and primped. And they even arrange that shit for you. They'll do the, the flower arrangement, make it look super expensive. And you just spend $25 to $50 on flowers. I'm telling you, and they do it for free. Go to Kroger. 
okay? Go to Kroger. Go to the floor department. Go get that shit wrapped. Because why are you telling her that she's gonna prick her damn fingers on roses? Like when I see flowers, I'm trying to hug them bitches. I don't, <laughs> don't give me no raw ass roses where I can hurt myself, especially if I'm excited because she was super excited to see him. Now, listen, listen, Kay. That gift that you got him. <sighs> see, I, I see a lot of the mistakes that I've made in these ladies. <laughs> and I just be, I be yelling at the screen. Like, don't do it. Don't, no, don't give him that shit. Like, that gift, when he was like, I don't deserve this. And he was, she was like, yeah, I know. Because he didn't work for it, sis. Yes, he got sick. Yes, it was time apart. He have not worked for nothing like that yet. Like, don't do that. It's, it's, it's okay to be kind. Like, the, the flowers, that's a small gesture, right? You could have given him something, a mug, whatever, whatever, a cap, something very, but a big ass box full of stuff. She's, she's laying it on thick. She's laying it on thick. And, um, that can, that can play out in the worst way. And from what I saw today, she can spin that type of shit and that's not okay. They get to their new apartment. And it's beautiful, of course, same apartment, uh, just different decor. I see that they furnished and decorated these homes, again, very standard-like, but just, just to make it comfortable, right? Um, their dogs meet, which is great. Her dog is a, she a tad bit aggressive to his dog, but whatever, dogs are cute. They start talking about fighting, how they fight. And he asks her, like, you know, if she's the type to walk off during a fight. And she was like, no, I'm not the one to walk off in a fight. Like, I'm not going to walk off or, you know, not answer your phone call or your text. Or, that's abusive. Like, that's abusive. And I'm like, no, sis, what you're doing. No, stop, Crystal. <laughs> like I said earlier, it's okay in the heat of a moment to walk away. It's okay. Because you don't want anything to get past a point of no return so it's okay to even vocalize listen this shit is getting too intense i'm gonna I'm go ahead and walk off we can have this conversation when we're both cooled down like just as long as you're communicating um i think that's a healthy way to do it versus just walking away or just walking out because you are leaving a person with a certain type of uncertainty but I, abusive is, that's, but I think that was extreme, but I, I think that's because sis has abandonment issues, but we'll get into that. Zach leaves um, to take the dogs to daycare and all that extra stuff that I didn't know existed, but I'm gonna look into it. <laughs> and um, you see like a, a these fucking nuts. <laughs> You see Kay like on the video and she's visibly upset and she like smashes down the Clorox wipes and I'm just like, what is this about? And it's because um, he left, but he didn't say anything to her. Okay, we're gonna pretend like everything is normal, okay? If you've gotten to this point of the video, everything is fine, everything is normal. Anyways, to get that upset um, at something like this, it it was it was a lot for me to process. Like, even if it was a situation of him not communicating with her, I don't think all of that was necessary. That type of anger is stemming from something outside of Zach because there is no way in hell anybody should be that angry for miscommunication. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, they talked to Pastor Cal, Pastor Cal comes and you know, before they get there, they have like this thing that she does that, that a lot of people do that I hate because I hate poor communication. He's like, hey, what's wrong? And um, nothing, I'm fine. But then in the confessionals, she Michaela's like, 
well, he should know what, what's wrong with me. Sis, no, he doesn't. If you didn't say why, you can't assume that he knows why. Like that type of behavior just displays immaturity. Because you've gotten to this point in your life and you're still not effectively communicating. You're still not voicing how you feel in a mature way. Like I just don't understand what the hype is over not communicating. Men are not mind readers, women are not mind readers. We get pissed off when men don't communicate with us and I'm sure it's the same way, vice versa. Um, I know that I've gotten myself in trouble over explaining and over communicating, but my whole thing is if I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you so that you can't come back to me and be like, you didn't tell me. Yeah, yes, I did. So <laughs> when she said, um, when she said, yeah, he, he should know because he, you know, he left and he didn't say anything. So he should know why I'm upset. Sis, he's only known you for eight days. Yes, I got it. You're married, but you don't know each other. Please take that into account. This man does not know your ins and outs, your ticks, your, your scratches, your nothing. He don't know shit. So why are you beating down this man, this man's neck already? I am just, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this is one of those Houston girl stereotypes that I don't like. That I got an attitude. <laughs> My toxic personality trait is. <laughs> like that shit. <laughs> like and when, I, when I'm looking at Michaela, that is what I see. Because when they were talking, when her sisters were talking about this, when she was about to get married and she was getting her makeup done, Remember what I said in the last video, guys. Remember I said, she sounds like she's not stubborn. She sounds like the type that when she gets angry, she'll get disrespectful. And that's exactly what happened in this episode because when he said what he said and she cursed at him so heavily, just super aggressive like, it's like, sis, that wasn't even warranted. I, listen. I've already said on this platform before, I had a nasty mouth. Like my, I, I just, I just come from a lot of folks who cuss. That is just, I'm working through it, but it's just who I am. And <laughs> when I heard that, it was just like, that wasn't even warranted. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, why are you on 10 like this? You know, it's, it's just not necessary. So, she, you a goddamn motherfucking lot. Like, whoa, calm down. Like, take a, take a breather. Everything's okay, you know? Anyways, Pastor Cal gets there and, um, they're distant. They're on opposite sides of the couch. And Pastor Cal is just like, okay, what happened? They explain what happened. Um, Michaela's just not hearing that shit. And then the piercing eyes is what was really disturbing to see. I had a friend. We're no longer friends. But I had a friend who used to look like that when we would be talking and I'd be like, why the fuck? And see, she had very bad vision. So I just chalked it up to that. But when I seen that on this episode, I was like, that bitch was, she ain't believe nothing I said. Is that why? <laughs> Cause it was, the, it was the exact same look. So I was just like, what is happening here? Like, what? what? <laughs> That's scary. But she was just like, because he was, Zach was basically saying, listen, I understand that you're upset with me right now, but I still think you're an amazing woman. You're, you know, you're out of this world. He's just giving her all types of praise and affirmations. And she's just looking like, yeah, you're a fucking liar. And I don't think that that's fair. Michaela is super intense. Her emotions are super intense. And when you don't know how to filter and tailor off these emotions, you can be dangerous mentally. I'm not gonna say that she's gonna be dangerous physically because I, I, this is all observation. But when somebody's that intense, then everything is that intense. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
everything is that intense. So if you do something to kind of, you know, to affect them in a, in a in the worst way, or even just, you know, in a small way, their negative emotions about you are gonna be super intense. And that's, that's what I gather from all of this. While they were talking, both of them, while they were talking, you can tell that they didn't know how to uh, like communicate because they were stumbling over their words, they were, especially Zach. And I think it was because they were just, they, they were just hyper-focused on the emotions. And like Zach was just like this and, he, and I just can't really just do, you know, like, and I was like, oh, calm, take a breath and, and, and think about what it is that you need to say. But they were both like zoned in on the emotions. So they couldn't really talk, you know, where it was going to be said effectively because I was confused. But <laughs> what I gathered from all of that is Zach is just like, listen, I can't do this shit. I can't talk about this anymore because he's pissed and she's pissed and she, she's not believing him. And he's been through something. He said he's been through something similar and he thinks that this is a red flag. I agree. And I, I commend him for even uh, pointing that out. Michaela, she's talking about what she's gone through and her dad and she puts this on her dad passing. Her dad, you know, she's saying her dad is a good man. And now she has these abandonment issues because her dad has passed. Um, one thing that I, I, I absolutely hate is when people don't believe women, especially black women. But in this instance, it's not that I don't believe her. I just don't feel like that is the sole reason that she was that pissed off. I don't think that it stemmed from abandonment issues. I don't think that's the main reason. I'm no psychiatrist, I'm no psychologist, I'm no therapist, I'm not a life coach. I'm not any of those things. I'm just saying what I'm saying. To be that, to be that angry that fast at that level does not look like abandonment issues to me. I, when I've seen abandonment issues, it's always been sorrow you know, anxiety, sadness, you know what I'm saying? Um, very docile, very, you know what I'm saying? But never to the point of anger. And, and I could be wrong, but it's just like, I don't know, sis. Like, I, I just, I just don't know if that's coming from an abandonment place all together. It could be a point of it, but it, I don't think all together, nah. He tries to console her and she's just like, oh no, now you wanna, now you wanna. And that again, very immature. Um, I don't like that because if you want something to work, if you want somebody to work with you, you have to be willing to work with them too. It's not like he betrayed you. He didn't cheat on you. It wasn't any of those things. It was just a simple communication. So if somebody's trying to work with you in that moment, you got to be mature enough to put that bullshit to the side and say, okay, here is, this is where I'm at with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but don't, now you want to, that's, that's so full of games to me. And I'm just like, I don't like this shit. I don't like it. And, um... I'm really hoping that things are gonna progress. Even though we saw some craziness <laughs> in the, the previews when they were in the keys about Michaela and Zach's relationship, I'm really hoping that those are very small percentages and that it doesn't have anything to do with the relationship. Because I just don't like for black women to be painted in a crazy light. I really, I don't. Like, we're not crazy. We're not all out here just fucking crazy just for the fuck of it. We're not all out here just responding just because. We're not all here just having an attitude and being toxic just because. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a reason behind every season. So, like, don't put us in this box. Don't make us monoliths. Don't make us this stereotypical angry black woman. So that's one thing that I'm not okay with. And that's why I feel like I'm going to be exhausted with this. Um, I'm glad that Dr. Cal made them go ahead and console each other. It was a little awkward, but you know, they did it. And, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just, I'm glad that they, they're getting to, they, that they were getting to that point of reconciliation. One thing that I, that, that really, oh, that really just grinded my gears was when, um, Pastor Cal was basically, you know, 
telling him, or no, not Pastor Cal. When they were talking to Pastor Cal, Zach was saying, listen, I'm here for you. I want to take on this type of responsibility to protect for you, you know, protect you, provide for you, be this for you, be that for you. Just basically saying like, I'm going to step up as the man in your life that you need me to show up as. And for Michaela to say, no, I don't want you to do that. That's a whole lot of responsibility. And I just don't want to put that on you. And it's like, wait a fucking minute. We, 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 we pray about the partners that we want in our lives. We pray about the jobs that we want in our lives. We pray about the things that we want to, to manifest in our lives all the time. The circumstances, the outcomes, the incomes, the partners, the living arrangements, the vehicle, the everything that we want to manifest in our lives. And we sabotage them bitches every single time because we feel like we're not worthy. Nah, sis, you prayed for it, you manifested it, you meditated on it, you, you did your scripting, you were writing, you were doing this, you were doing that to make this shit come to pass. So why would you sit in, in, in the face of your creator and say, no, that's too much. Don't, you don't have to do that. No, that's too much. No! <laughs> Doctor, I mean, Pastor Cal was like, no, you let him be the man that you want him to be. He's telling you that he wants you to be, that he wants to be the man that you want him to be. He wants to protect you. He wants to be these, he wants to step up in your life. Why would you not let him be that man? And I absolutely agreed. I get so sick of our self-sabotaging behavior. And I can speak on this highly because I used to be one of them. Now, listen. Give it to me. Give it to me. Okay? Let me sit and rest in my feminine energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, like, don't, don't sit there and say, these are all the things that I want. And as soon as you get it, oh, no. No. That's too much. I don't want to. No. No. Give your masculine energy some room and time to breathe and sit in your femininity and receive. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean to get preachy, but I just get tired of seeing these types of behaviors with us in our community. And it's like, we gotta, we gotta want better. And I want Michaela to want better. I want Michaela to whatever it is that she's doing. I'm really, man, listen. I hope that she sees this and if they've made it past this point, great. If she hasn't, see, you know, sought out for help, sis, go get it. If she, like, I, I want you to do whatever you need to do because this, this is a fool. And I don't like it. But we're going to see how everything else pans out. Um, this episode was pretty good. Um, like I said in my last video, I, I, it wasn't going to get steamy until Michaela and Zach because they're, they're coming in with the drama. So, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep standing up. I'm so short. Um, so, I keep sliding out of my seat. So, forgive me. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I just... I'm hoping that the, the season continues to get better and better and better, which it looks like it is. But um, y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode, y'all. Tell me how you feel in the comments below. Um, I'm going to be coming to y'all every week with this review. So please stay tuned. Subscribe. I'm coming every week every single week i'm trying to still find a designated day i still have yet to find a designated day but every week i'm gonna be coming with this review for um for married at first sight so hope you liked it comment like subscribe hit that notification bell if you want more content like this that'll let me know that you like this and that you want to keep seeing my face so <laughs> anyways guys thank you so much for all the support Love you. Peace.